Welcome to Bioremediation and Dr. Mickey. In this video, we need to explain what are the different mechanisms involved in the phytoremediation process. As you know, when we're using the plant in bioremediation processing, that means this is called the phytoremediation. So these mechanisms involved, which are the phytosequestration, phytodegradation, phytovolatilization, phytostabilization, also phytoextraction, rhizofiltration, phytoremediation, and finally phytohydraulics. All of these mechanisms will be explained after the break. Welcome back. All of these mechanisms are depend on the plant physiological processes, deriving by the solar energy because the plant doing is the photosynthesis process, and also by other available precursors. Therefore, in bioremediation application, multiple mechanisms are involved depends on the design the application. The first mechanism we have today is the phytosequestration. In this mechanism, able to reduce the mobility of the contaminant and able to prevent the migration of the contaminant to the air, water, even the soil. And this phytosequestration containing three different mechanisms. The first mechanism called the phytochemical complexation in root zone. And in this mechanism, able to reduce the fraction of the contaminant that is bioavailable for the microorganism. So, in this mechanism, contaminant will not be available for the microorganism. The second is transport protein inhibition on the root membrane. And this mechanism, able to stabilize the contaminant on the root surface also preventing the contaminants from the entering the plant. So, in this mechanism, able to keep the contaminant in the soil area. The third mechanism for phytosequestration is the vacuolar storage in the root cells. In this mechanism, the contaminants can be sequestered or trapped into the vacuoles of the root cells and the preventing further translocation to the plant xylem. So, in this mechanism, the contaminants cannot move from place to another place, and also can't migrate from the place to another place. The second mechanism for phytoremediation is the phytodegradation. And this phytodegradation depends on some factors as the plant species and also the concentration and the composition of the contaminant also on the soil conditions and the contaminant may be passing through the rhizosphere only partially or negligibly impeded by the phytosequestration and or rhizodegradation so in such a case, the plants catalyze the several internal reactions by the producing some enzymes with various functions and also with different activities. If you look at this table, this table showing the some important enzymes associated with the uh, bioremediation. The first enzyme, for example, the aromatic uh, dehalogenase enzyme, and the target is the chlorinated aromatics compounds like the DDT, also carboxyl esterases enzymes, this is the, the target is the xenobiotics, and other enzymes, the peroxygenase enzymes, the peroxidase enzymes, lacase enzymes, nitrilase enzymes, and other enzymes with the different targets and pollutants. Another mechanism we have, this is called the phytovolatilization. So the volatilization of the contaminants is from the plant maybe occurs from the leaf stomata. This is the pores onto the surface of the uh, leaf. Or maybe from the plant stems. This is called the phytovolatilization. If you look at this figure, you can find the contaminants in the soil, maybe uptake transport from the soil to the uh, uh, roots then the root the contaminants will be 
translocation from the roots to the stems from the stems to the leaves as well so the uh, 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 finally the uh, pollutants can be volatilized through the leaf stomata the mechanism number four we have this is called the phytostabilization and it refers to the contaminated soil and the sediments in place by vegetation and to immobilizing toxic contaminants in the soil so phytostabilization of the soil and sediment stabilization can be mobilized when exposed to uncontrolled water flows in such case soil can also mobilize by blowing wind and both of these modes the soil or the sediment migration are known as the erosion or leaching also stabilization including the infiltration control this is also another method to stabilize the contaminants in the subsurface to prevent water from interacting with the waste possibly leading to the its migration so phytostabilization covers for the uh, infiltration control are composed of soil and plant that maximize the evaporation from the soil and the plant evapotranspiration processes for the system the mechanism number four we have called the phyto extraction and this phyto extraction means the ability of the plant to uptake the contaminants from the soil to the roots and translocate the contaminants from the root to the stem and the other leaves in this mechanism there are several factors that affect the potential uptakes into the plant through the transpiration stream and include the hydrophobicity polarity between the soil and the contaminant also sorption properties and also the solubility is the contaminant able to soluble or precipitate in the soil another mechanism we have called rhizofiltration and refers to the use of the plant roots to absorb or concentrate or precipitate the hazards compounds or the pollutants especially the heavy metals from aqua solutions because heavy metals cannot be degraded but only you can dis uh, dissolve or maybe precipitate or immobilize if you look at this figure you can find the contaminants are absorbed by the root of the plant after that can be uh, 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 filtered also another mechanism called the rhizoremediation in this mechanism is a sequestration or immobilization or even the retention of the toxicants or what we call it the uh, the contaminant within a confined area also in this mechanism the removal of contaminants from the soil or wastewater also degradation of organic pollutants by plant microbial association all of these uh, mechanisms under the rhizo remediation process or mechanism the final mechanism we have is the phytohydraulics and this is depend on the local hydrology and phytohydraulics means the ability of the plant to evapotranspire sources of surface water and groundwater and as mentioned before the evapotranspire as evaporation and transpiration together so the plant able to do both of them in one mechanism or in one process called evapotranspire this is the related to phytohydraulics finally we have today is the advantage and the limitation of the bioremediation process if you look at this table shows the different advantages and the limitation of bioremediation you can find the advantage the advantage of the bioremediation is the first in C2 the limitation the limited to shallow soils streams and also some groundwater so it's only some limitation also the advantage of bioremediation as passive 
the limitation high concentration of hazardous materials can be uh, uh, toxic to the plant solar driving one of the advantages the limitation mass transfer limitations associated with other bio treatments and so on you can follow all of these advantages and limitations for this uh, table also one of the advantages this is the phytovolatilized contaminant could be transforming to less toxic forms while some limitation the contaminant or the hazards uh, metabolite might accumulate in the plant and be uh, uh, passed on in later products such as the fruits and also the uh, lumber also one of the advantages this is the phytostabilization the limitations the contaminants remain in place the vegetation and soil may be required long-term maintenance to prevent the re-release of the contaminants and future leaching and so on you can follow the uh, other limitations and uh, advantages as well also one of the advantages is phyto extraction some limitations in metal hyperaccumulator are generally slow growing with a small biomass and shallow root systems as well also some of the limitation plants harvested must be properly disposed and so on you can follow other the the limitations also one of the uh, advantages this is the uh, uh, rhizofiltration using the terrestrial plants removes the contaminants more efficiently than aquatic plants and also you can find some limitations the pH of the influent solution may have to be continually adjusted to obtain the optimum metal uptakes and so on please try to follow the advantage and the limitation of the biomediation through this table so in this video we explained the different mechanisms of the phytoremediation and also what are the advantages and the limitations of the bioremediation as well. So this is the end of this video and don't forget to share, like and subscribe and activate the bell to reach all of my new videos. Thank you, good luck and bye bye.